To step back on NEM3, I mean, for homeowners, essentially what this means is you're getting about 75% less for your export rates of electricity. The, the change from NEM2 to NEM3 is something that we've actually experienced in many other markets around the world. If you have an existing system and you're in NEM2, you add a battery to that solar edge system today, you'll still stay in NEM2. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming back to you from InterSolar North America, the conference here in Long Beach, California. And this morning I'm joined by Michelle Spina and Peter Matthews from Solar Edge, and we're going to be talking about Solar Edge's line, but specifically we want to start out with the discussion of what's been going on since the net metering rule change was announced here in California. Um, how is Solar Edge responding to the move from net metering 2.0 to now 3.0 in April? Sure, yeah, I mean, just a quick background to, to step back on NEM3. I mean, for homeowners, essentially what this means is you're getting about 75% less for your export rates of electricity. So what that means to us is self-consumption. We want homeowners to be able to manage a battery to leverage the best times to export that energy, but also to use that battery to power their house. So what we're seeing is post-NIM, which is April 14th, that's the deadline, that's when it's all going forward, um, homeowners are going to want a battery in order to manage and maintain, kind of become their own power plant. That's kind of how we think of it. Um, and so uh, they're going to be able to use that energy uh, at night to power their house, but they're also going to be able to leverage a couple of export hours, we call them power hours, um, where they can dump that battery and make money. Uh, in NEM3. And so what we're doing is we're educating customers, homeowners on our value. Uh, we have a battery um, and so we and we have high supply on it um, and that's kind of what we're doing to ensure that we have um, you know we are up, up front and ahead of NEM3. Just a word from our sponsor Span.io and the Span Smart Electrical Panel. If you're considering an investment in a solar plus battery backup system for your home then you're going to want to have maximum visibility and control of how much solar energy you're collecting, how much energy you're storing, and where that energy is being spent within your home. The SPAN Smart Electrical Panel allows you to dynamically control which circuits have access to backup power and which ones do not without the need of a separate critical loads panel and get up to 40% more running time on your battery backup. So feel free to go directly to the span.io website, or you can just visit the link on the description below. It'll take you to the page, you can get more information, or if you'd like to, get in touch with an installer right away. Yeah, and just to add, um, the, 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 the change from NEM2 to NEM3 is something that we've actually experienced in many other markets around the world. So we're the world's largest um, supplier of residential inverter systems. We've done battery, uh, and battery backup and self-consumption systems in places like Germany, Australia, Netherlands, Italy, um, and many of these markets uh, are actually a couple years ahead of, of the U.S. and specifically California on this move to self-consumption. Germany went to self-consumption probably four or five years ago. Now the attach rate in Germany is almost 70 percent um, with batteries for this very reason. So exactly what we're experiencing here in California now and all this kind of uncertainty, we are very, very familiar with and we have dealt with these transitions um, a number of times. We've got uh, well over 100,000 systems um, with our batteries or, and, and other people's batteries in this uh, self-consumption kind of environment. So um, what you need is really the ability to um, integrate the smart decision making around batteries, EV charging, uh, even things like hot water heating, uh, controlling the other loads in your home, okay, by smart decision making based on the rates that you're paying, um, either to buy the electricity or to sell it back to the grid, or even not be able to sell it back to the grid. So it's that kind of decision making that you have to design into the system, which is really the lynch, which is really the the foundation of, of our new Solar Edge Home platform. So, um, so Michelle, talk a little bit about NEM3 and um, and what what California homeowners 
are going to, uh, the kind of decisions they're going to have to be making, especially when they start getting EV charging and, um, you know, the ability, the, the, they don't get the incentive to, to uh, export back uh, for most of the year. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, we have an advantage. Solar Edge has been ahead of the game in terms of a smart energy solution. Um, so if you have a Solar Edge system right now and you're in NEM2, the good news is these utility companies want batteries to come into the market because the next step is demand response, which essentially means that these utilities will be able to pull from that battery and will be able to leverage homeowners' batteries when there's peak challenges and there's demand issues on the grid. Um, so they're friendly to batteries coming into the space. If you have an existing system and you're in NEM2, you add a battery to that solar edge system today, you'll still stay in NEM2. Um, and so that's, that's a great scenario. Um, you'll be able to leverage um, a battery solution. We all have outages a lot in California. Um, you have the ability to add batteries now or later on a solar edge system, EV chargers now or later. Um, a huge thing that we run into here in California is main panel upgrades. So when we're talking about battery systems, EV chargers, main panel upgrades can be a very costly electrical upgrade for homeowners. We help to avoid those because we're on the DC side of the solar system. So we're able to wire everything into this little nugget behind me. Um, and that means that homeowner can avoid main panel upgrades. So that's our goal for, for homeowners as well. Um, I think we have a lot of advantages when it comes to batteries um, that I think we're going to talk about as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, folks, if you've been following this issue, then you already know that, that, that the basics of it with net metering 2.0 to 3.0 means that you're no longer going to be able to just sort of use the grid as your battery. I know a lot of times that's how salespeople will describe it as, oh, you don't need a battery, just use the grid as your battery, just dump whatever electricity you don't need to them and they're going to pay you full credit for it. Well, they're not going to pay you full credit anymore depending on what time you have to send them your excess solar. And so I think the thinking is now, how can you set yourself up to, to where basically you can be providing for your own needs in terms of harvesting solar energy, but also having enough storage that you can store enough energy to meet the needs of your household during evening hours so that you don't have to rely on being able to export to the grid. Or in other words, be able to kind of take, take or leave the power company on your own terms to be more self-sufficient. Um, now a couple of questions came to mind based on what you said. Now I know there's a lot of homeowners out there that already have solar. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that we often get is, hey, I already have solar, but it's not really meeting 100% of my needs. If I add on to my solar system now, or if I add on solar and a battery now, will that invalidate my existing net metering 2.0 contract? Can you explain a little bit about how does that work? What can homeowners do now if they want to expand their solar or storage capacity? What can they do now and still stay within NEM 2.0? And then what could they potentially do in the future? Let's say maybe they just want to get solar in now so they can get in on the current rules, but they're interested in battery or EV in the future. They're just, they don't want to necessarily do all that right now because they want to make sure they just get in with solar under the current net metering. So what, what would you say to folks like that? Yeah, I mean, I think the key um, to, to remember two things. One, we have until April 14th to make the decision. If a homeowner has solar right now and wants to expand their system, um, they can expand their system before April, no problem, get a new inverter, larger inverter, and they'll stay in them too. The challenge comes after that April 14th deadline. If they want to expand that system, if they're swapping out the inverter, if they're getting a larger inverter, that means they're going to be triggered into NEM3. The good news is sometimes with our solar edge system, you don't have to expand and make a, put a larger inverter on that house. Um, so if you want to add modules to the existing inverter, if you want to add a battery, if you want to add an EV charger, it's not going to be a problem. Um, after the, the NEM3 switch, you can stay in NEM2. Another- let me, let, me, let me add to that too. Is if, let, let's say you have a, uh, 7.6 kilowatt inverter, and um, uh, seven, and let's say eight kilowatts of panels on your roof, uh, and you have an M2.0 um, uh, tariff. Uh, after the NEM 3.0 comes into effect, you could have an installer come out and add up to another five or six kilowatts of panels, put it on the same inverter or you could upgrade the inverter to our latest inverter. As long as you keep the same name plate capacity, which is 7.6 kilowatts, you don't trigger NEM 
3.0, can keep your same tariff. Now, why would you want to do that? Why would you want lots of DC on the roof, lots of panels, and only a 7.6 kilowatt inverter? Well, with all that DC energy flowing through your panels, you can send it to your battery, okay? You can send it to your EV charger, okay? You can send it to your hot water heater, okay? You can run loads in your home because it's done in the DC environment, which is um, which is uh, really unique to the solar edge topology. All right, so that's not something you can do with literally any other type of technology, traditional string inverter or a microinverter. You can't do it that way. So you're going to see lots of California homeowners, and there's about a million of them today that have our system under the NEM1 and the NEM2. So there's lots of them out there. So if you're a solar edge existing solar edge customer with an inverter. Call your installer and say, I want to go battery, I want to add DC because I'm going to get an electric vehicle in the future, uh, I want to run more loads in my home and I want to be more resilient. We have a pretty seamless way for them to upgrade and not trigger this new tariff, which again, is it, it really hurts the economics of exporting back, all right? So we do avoid that. Now, if you're going to buy a new system, you're a new customer, talk about kind of what they can get here. Yeah, I mean, if you're a new customer into NEM3, as I mentioned before, you're going to want a battery because essentially as a homeowner, you're going to get a better return on investment with a battery system after NEM3 than without a battery. For sales reps too, that's that's difficult for us to wrap our head around because usually the, the return on investment is lower when you have solar only. After NEM3, when you have a battery, that return on investment is going to be better. Because as we mentioned, you can manage your energy and where that goes. So um, if you're thinking about going solar um, and it's after April 14th, there's still going to be huge advantages of going solar. And you, you mentioned earlier, you know, are we seeing a shift or a trend? Are we concerned? Personally, I see it as a huge opportunity because smart energy is the way to go no matter what. So with our system, you can add up to three batteries per inverter. Um, you can add uh, up to nine batteries on the house if you really need it. We have some here in the high desert that has eight or nine batteries on the home. You can add EV chargers. And then these load controllers um, are going to allow for that intelligent thinking, that management of energy, where if there is a power outage, for example, those are going to automatically turn off the heavy loads in your house so it can conserve energy within your battery and you can stay powered during an outage with that battery. Um, and then also it's all on the My Solar Edge app. So you manage this as a homeowner, you manage this energy decisions um, throughout the day, throughout the season, you can change them and shift them based on what's most advantageous to you. Excellent. Well, I'm personally really excited about this, guys. And, and really, you know, California has had it so good for so long that I don't think um, a lot of California homeowners realize what solar was like in other parts of the country. So you know, I got, I got started installing solar on the East Coast, Virginia, North Carolina, yeah. West Virginia. So there, it was always kind of a one-for-one -one bill swap. You know, even with, with the best low interest rate financing, it was pretty much just a one-for-one -one bill exchange. So people weren't necessarily going solar because they were going to save a lot of money on their monthly bill. They were going solar because they, they, they liked the idea of being energy independent. And if they were willing to pay, let's say, 150 a month to the power company, they were okay, pay 150 a month for their solar loan and just sort of break even for the first few years. And then over time with inflation, that's where the payback came in because of course the, the, the cost of energy goes up with everything else with inflation. But if you have a fixed rate financing, you know, your finance payment should stay level. Yeah. But, Can I add one point to yeah. um, Joe? People uh, are now gonna start getting their you know, uh, 2023 utility bills. Utility bills in California, at least in, in PG&E territory, are up 38% year over year. I don't think a lot of California homeowners, I mean, you hear about power bills going up, many people get an annual true up, okay? And they haven't gotten their annual true up, okay? And uh, a lot of people are gonna be shocked. Power bills are, are going up and going up fast. Uh, and the IOUs, uh, SDG&E, Southern California Edison, PG&E, are now asking for another somewhere between eight and nine percent for next year, okay? So, and, and that's for electricity, right? And obviously, natural gas uh, is up 4X year over year from, from where we were. Obviously, outside the United States, it's up much, much more than that. European homeowners are uh, feeling this 
uh, uh, increasing utility rates uh, on, a, on, a, on a much more dramatic scale than we are. And Europe is going solar faster than uh, anyone has ever seen. It's uh, actually very uh, exciting to see. So I think this, um, this utility rate, uh, you know, solar, if you can be cheaper than your, than your utility, makes sense. I think that advantage uh, is going to become uh, bigger and bigger, especially with the price of, uh, of energy on a global basis uh, really under uh, a lot of pressure that, that people are going to start feeling in their daily lives. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think that's kind of the, the point I was trying to get at is that even with the extra cost of adding battery storage with your solar installation, even for a 100% financed installation, because electric rates in California are going up so fast, even doing solar with with a you know a partial home or even a full home backup, you'll end up with a lower monthly payment with a financed solar and storage system than you would end up just sticking with PG&E or sticking with uh, SDG&E or one of these big utilities that are just insane with how they're you know how they're raising their rates. And so again, that's why I've been preaching this for so many years, guys. Is that solar and storage is not just for saving the planet; it's for it's for saving your own personal energy situation or at least giving you control over your own personal energy situation so that if the utilities raise the rates again or if they change the rules from you again or if they whatever, you're in a better position to weather the storm and you can kind of take or leave them or use their service on your own terms. You're not going to just be forced to take whatever they give you.